Namaste. So I wanted to follow up on the previous video, which is about meditation. Well, what do you do when you get to the point where you're seeing the light of Brahman? Now, this is advanced, okay? We covered in the previous video what to do if you don't see any light in meditation. Well, you should go back and do bhakti yoga and even karma yoga and to increase your punya and to develop love of God. Because meditation is based on the foundation of karma and bhakti. And if you don't have these spiritual assets, you will find it very difficult, if not impossible, to reach the stage of actual meditation. Meditation is not thinking. It's not, in fact, it's not any kind of doing. Maybe in the beginning, neti neti, uh, just setting aside all of the things that we think that we are or that we do. And when we finally get to the point where we're face to face with Brahman, we have to know when to stop doing, when to stop making efforts. This is very important because effort is ego. Effort is an action of the intelligence to pursue a certain goal. And the goal here has been reached. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. See, we are already Brahman, as we discussed in the ontological categories video. If we were not Brahman, we wouldn't be conscious. <laughs> if we were not in Turiya already, we wouldn't be able to be aware of the conditioned states of consciousness, Jagrat, Svapna, and Sushupti. So, Turiya, Brahman, is fundamental. I am Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi. Or one time, Ramana Maharshi was asked, what is a good way to describe Brahman? And he brought up the Hebrew phrase from the Old Testament, I am that I am. And this is a wonderful phrase because it expresses perfectly the non-dual nature of Brahman. Non-dual means Brahman is not a doer. Brahman is pure being, pure existence. And so this wonderful phrase, I am that I am. In other words, I am pure existence alone. I am not a doer. I am not an actor. I don't possess anything. I have no assets. I don't identify with anything. Huh? I am simply existing. That is Brahman. That is pure awareness, pure being. So we want to realize that stage. And how do we do it? In meditation, neti neti, giving up all these attachments, identifications, projections, overlays, superimpositions, and so on. So I want to look at this phrase, I am that I am. I am, of course, means that I exist. And this is the fundamental thought, or even it precedes thought, it's simply an experience that I exist, I am. There is no object. I am this, I am that. <laughs> so what does this sentence mean? Well, the word that in I am that I am is what's called a conjunction, uh, not a relative or demonstrative pronoun, as it is in many sentences, uh, to say, I am that which talks about I am. <laughs> that would be a relative pronoun, introducing a dependent clause. 
But here, this very interesting definition. In an elliptical sentence to introduce a dependent clause expressing a wish, a cause, or surprise. So the fact, I mean, this is surprising huh, that God is simply I am. That I am. See, this is an elliptical sentence. Elliptical means it doesn't have a predicate. It only has a subject and a verb, I am. Then there's a dependent clause, that meaning uh, because it's surprising, it's astonishing, it's amazing, it's unprecedented, it's unique, I am. That's it. There ain't no more. So Brahman is that which is only. Not a knower, not a thinker, not a speaker, not a doer, not an owner, not uh, someone who is identified with a body or a form or any kind of action or anything else. That's all neti neti. <laughs> so, what does this mean for a meditator? It means that when you get to the stage where you are conscious of the light of Brahman, which, as we said in the last video, is either the reflection of the self, the conscious self, with a capital S, in the purified mind, or a direct perception of Saguna Brahman, Brahman with qualities, uh, that the self is always Nirguna Brahman, without qualities. So when Maya removes all of her upadis, her, all of her coverings, she is also Brahman. But because she's different from Nirguna Brahman, Nirguna Brahman can perceive her as an object. And when she takes off all her coverings, she is actually identical in quality with the Nirguna Brahman. Brahman is Brahman. <laughs> existence is existence. So anyway... When you reach that stage, you have to know when to stop making any kind of efforts. Because effort is ego. Effort is a thought. It may not even be a verbal thought, but it's an intention. So that is also a kind of doing. I am going to watch this here light. <laughs> See, looking is an act, it's doing. We're always, when we look, we're looking for something, isn't it? Like for example, when we go to cross the street, we look for any traffic which is coming, isn't it? So when we look, we're expecting to see something or the lack of something, a particular object, and that's a desire. So a desire is a thought, even though it may not be verbalized. doesn't matter. A purpose is an act. And because that's an act, it will take us away from Brahman, because Brahman is not an actor. Pure Brahman, Nirguna Brahman, is not an actor. The secondary or inferior Brahman, Shakti, is an actor or actress. <laughs> She does everything. She creates the world. She makes these bodies. She creates consciousness, the objects of consciousness, and so on and so forth. All the phenomena that we experience in the world. But when she takes off all of these coverings, she is also equal in quality. 
But the second we start to do something, the coverings come back. The coverings are, I am an individual. I am a doer, a knower, a thinker, an intender. Huh? I have purposes. I have desires. And of course, this is going to take us away from the purity of uh, Nirguna Brahman. And it's going to put us back into the conditioned consciousness. We don't want that. And, and this is the cause of a lot of trouble in meditation. This is why sometimes people reach a very high state of meditation or realization and then fall down. So the Shastra says, later on we'll see in Kata Upanishad, it says that the practice has to be maintained, otherwise the yogic state deteriorates. This is what it's talking about. That once having seen Brahman, having experienced that light, which is the self, that one again becomes covered over and entangled with ego, basically. Separation, individuality, desire. All these things are ignorance. Huh? They don't really exist. We went over that in, you know, what is, is, what ain't, ain't. Because what has a beginning also has an end. And that which is temporary, that which is non-eternal, impermanent is not real it's illusion it's a covering on the real self so we want to let go of all these things and to do that we have to know when we reach the point of being aware of brahman as light to let go of all further efforts we've reached the goal there's nowhere further to go. Anywhere that you go from there is downhill. <laughs> so relax. Just be. It's okay. One time I was meditating in the Zen mode when I was a Buddhist monk. And I started to realize what is actually Nibbana or Nirvana. It's no self, no mind, no thoughts, no words, no desires, nowhere to go, nothing to do, nothing to possess, no responsibilities, huh? no actions of any kind, just being. Once one enters into this state, this is automatically samadhi. Don't think, oh, I have to attain samadhi. And that samadhi is some kind of state where one is completely unaware of the senses. That's not true. That's some idealized version of the yogis, which requires a constant effort to maintain. But when one is aware that I am not this body, I am not this mind, I am not these senses, what to speak of their objects, everything that is perceived is maya, different from the self, with a capital S. And that includes the self with a small s, <laughs> the ego, who we think we are as opposed to who we really are. Who we really are is nothing but Brahman, nothing but pure awareness without an object, except itself. I am that I am. See? And what am I? Only awareness. The potential or the capacity for consciousness is there. But it's not being actualized. Because if it was actualized, it would have an object, and that wouldn't be the real self. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung. 
ओम नमः शिवाय